Good evening, everybody. My name is Sharzad Morgan. And if you notice the spelling with the S-C-H, you can tell I'm from Germany because that's how we spell the sh sound. Sharzad. Also, ich bin Deutsch. Ich bin in Deutschland geboren. Und ich wohne hier, seitdem ich neun Jahre alt bin. So, I want to talk about the Holocaust because... I'm German, so that is part of the shame of our German heritage, just like slavery is part of the shame of the United States heritage. And we all have shameful pasts uh, in our nations with colonialisms and wars and killings, right? And I will tell you that my grandfather already told me back when I was a little girl in Germany how much he disapproved of Hitler. How he said from the beginning, this is a bad man. Uh, and my uh, grandfather was, um, so my mother grew up in World War II when the bombs were all overhead. They, um, my grandfather was a teacher who became a businessman and owned a business and they had some hired help and they had a nice house and actually the American soldiers took their house over during World War II and trashed it, which, you know, soldiers might do. My mother told stories about eating dandelion greens, but that's not what this video is about. This is about that the Germans committed atrocious crimes in whatever. I'm, I'm not that familiar with what all led to it and why people followed this maniac. But it is a stain on our German name that we did this. And I think Germany tried very hard to overcome that stain by um, building alliances and becoming a productive exporter and all of that. And um, well, this is to say that what the Germans are now promoting in Gaza, it's the same thing. Like, they have learned nothing. Are the Germans supporting the atrocities in Gaza because they feel like, well, we owe it to the Jews to let them uh, retaliate and do what was done unto them? Like, they were killed, and so now we're going to let them kill other people? Is it that? Or... Is it that they've learned nothing? Like, I don't understand. I think that African-American people would feel the same way, that they were ostracized by a nation, turned into slaves, thought of as lesser. I would think they can uh, kind of relate to the Palestinian cause because really the United Nations gave uh, the Jewish people a state called it Israel, um, and they took away the Palestinians' land. So it's a colony, really. I mean, Israel really is a colony. I think the Palestinian people are willing to coexist with the Jewish people in their state of Israel, but Israel was not happy with the land they were given. So they want to kill everyone who is uh, a Palestinian because they're subhuman. The same way that Hitler thought of Jews as subhuman, the Jews are now thinking of the Palestinians as subhuman and wanting to eradicate them and get their land in the name of religion. I'm going to make a separate video about religion. Um, but I don't understand how we German people and we American people who have the stain of having committed atrocious crimes against Jewish people under Hitler, against black people uh, in the early days of the United States, how we can still act this way. Like, at the same time, we give homage to, uh, you know, we have the Holocaust Museum and we have you know, all this reverence, we talk about reparations, but then we're just still doing the same thing. I don't understand that. I think that the way to actually do reparations is to not repeat the disenfranchisement and the disrespect 
towards people of other religions, other races, and ethnicities, especially because these people aren't trying to hurt us. If you look at what the Amer what the Americans did to the black people, they used them as slaves. They the black people weren't hurting us. They used them as slaves. The Jewish people weren't hurting the Germans. They just wanted to eradicate them. I don't know why. Maybe somebody can leave that in the comments. I don't know. I left Germany before, and when I was nine years old before uh, we studied all this. I don't even know if they study it, but we sure studied it in the U.S. I remember in sixth grade, and even when my kids were in sixth grade, taking a field trip to the Holocaust Museum in Los Angeles, you know, making sure that we understood that the Jewish people were victims and that they had equal rights. But now they're not acting like victims. They're they're acting really improperly, in my opinion. I stand with the Jewish people who are against genocide, and I stand with any German and American people who are against genocide. I don't think this is very helpful. My experience comes from being a German and having that history, you know, that the Germans did that. And also having a Persian father. I've never been to Iran. But my father is from there. He also lived in Turkey. He's an American citizen for a long time. And how much he was hated by the Germans for being an outsider. The Germans, when I grew up in the 60s, hated the Turks and the Iranians for tainting their bloodline or dressing different. So I remember seeing that. So I have some compassion against people of other races because I look white. My dad is very dark. My mother is very white. And I look white. I am white. I did my DNA thing. I'm like 90% European because my dad comes more from like the Turkish part or the more European part of West Asia. So I look white, but my dad is very dark. He almost looks like a, you know, he looks like an Iranian for sure. I don't get along with my dad, by the way. I was not raised with any religion. I've never been to Iran, but I did experience the prejudice that he faced as being from there, especially in Germany. And maybe that is the reason he wanted to move us to the US. My dad was a doctor doing research for most of his life, actually. And that's how we came to the US was um, back in the 70s, we had to prove that we were an asset to the country. You couldn't just come across, you know, like anything. You had to prove that you would be a contribution to this country. And he was. He was a researcher who did important work, I think, and he thinks. So I've seen people be disenfranchised, and I do not understand how we can continue this and think that it's okay. I think a lot of it has to do with like the people who have very strong religious views. They think that they're right. And that's one of the problems I actually have with religion. I'm going to make a separate video about the, you know, the God, the authoritarian God that loves us, but really will kill us if we don't listen to him. He's an abusive boyfriend, but that's going to be a different video. For now, I just want to say that people commit great atrocities in the name of their beliefs, whether their belief is their religion or their political views or whatever views they have. Um, Eckhart Tolle is really good talking about like our thoughts are not who we are. We really, really, really to grow as people, we have to go beyond our thoughts and recognize the humanity in everyone. Everybody has a soul. So when I was married, my ex-husband, he was getting very old and very ugly. I'm going to be honest, but I could love him anyway. And I remember thinking, I he's so ugly. His face is so ugly, but yet I love him so much. Like love can go beyond how someone looks. I loved him so much because of the history we had together, the children we had together, the life we had together. It wasn't just like I loved him because of how he looked. There was a reason. The love was based on a history, okay, and, and our history together. 
that seeing seeing the humanity inside every person is so important like it's a spiritual skill actually i really admire the people that have ugly little dogs i know all of you think your dog is like cute but half of you have ugly dogs and i admire you for that because you're able to love that ugly dog because you see the heart in that dog you're not just stuck on the superficialities of how the dog looks you know, I was always a little more superficial. I always wanted a dog that made me look good, like a German Shepherd or a Golden Retriever, um, a Black Lab. Those are dogs that I had. I didn't want some small yippy dog that was just like yipping at me. And I wanted a dog that could go running with me. That was another reason too. But um, all my dogs were mutts. I didn't have any purebreds, so just so you know. <laughs> but... One of the things that I do in my um, bookkeeping appointments is I'm, I, I'm able to accept people for what they need in their bookkeeping appointment and not be taken aback by, you know, how they look or what their religion is or their political affiliation or something like that. And that's a spiritual, that's a spiritual journey because somebody might be a democrat someone might be a republican someone could be this religion or that religion but ultimately inside there's a little child inside every person there's a heart inside every person i think that's where being a mother was really helpful because some of my babies were not that cute some babies are not that cute they come out with these warped heads and they're kind of pinkish and they get you know, a little bumps on their face, and they're not always cute. Sometimes they don't have a lot of hair. Some babies are very ugly, and you have to love them, okay? And that's how we have to think about other people, regardless of the color of their skin or what religion they are. I do think it's harder to love people once they start behaving violently towards us because then we're like in fight mode or defense mode. But just to say that, oh, well, this person, you know, this is like an Asian Indian, they're unattractive or whatever. I mean, I do have certain prejudices because I know people in certain cultures are raised in certain ways. Like those Asian Indian men, they're definitely raised very patriarchal. They are raised very differently. They have a lot of taboos around sexuality, around their patriarchy. The boys are very spoiled and treated as kings. So maybe that wasn't a good example, but the point is that every, every child, if you've ever been a parent, you will understand, or if you have a pet, inside that, every little child doesn't have... Um, uh, a mind with all its thoughts yet it's like in a hypnotic state just accepting whatever is around it just willing to love everyone who will love it just wanting to be loved and seeing all the adults as some kind of a god right they're these beautiful curious open-hearted souls and that's inside of everyone at some point some people got lost along the way Anyway, my point is just being that to get along as a world, we have to live in a world where all people get along. There used to be a song years ago about all the world. And I'm going to find it and I'm going to play it, which will make this video demonetized, but I don't care because this is important. I think it's called We Are the World. We Are the Children. So I'm going to play that right now. Okay, so this video is going to be demonetized. We Are the World by USA for Africa.
Beautiful, beautiful song. This is an old song from 1985. Oh my God, it just tells you how old I am. I remember the song. Here are the lyrics. There comes a time when we heed a certain call, when the world must have come together as one. There are people dying. Oh, and it's time to lend a hand to life, the greatest gift of all. We can't go on pretending day by day that someone, somewhere soon make a change. We all, we're all a part of God's great big family and the truth you know, love is all we need. We are the world, we are the children, we are the ones who make a brighter day, so let's start giving. There's a choice we're making, we're saving our own lives, it's true. We'll make a better day, just you and me. Oh, send them your heart so they know that someone cares and their lives will be stronger and free. As God has shown us by turning stones to bread and so we all must lend a helping hand. And then it goes on. We're the world, we are the children. We're the ones who make a brighter day. So let's start giving. There's a choice we're making. Okay. I remember this, and I remember when I was a little girl, they were talking a lot about the starving children in Africa, at least in Germany. I remember when I didn't finish my dinner, and my mom would say, Sure, Sad, uh, denk doch an die Kinder in Afrika, die nicht genug zu essen haben. You know, think about the starving children in Africa, and I had to finish my plate. I didn't know what star how eating, finishing my food would help the starving children in Africa. But I remember seeing those images and as a child being so heartbroken seeing that. And then later on, um, we don't hear about the starving children in Africa anymore, at least not here. I don't hear about it anymore. I'm sure it's still going on. Um, that broke my heart. I think that a lot of my compassion for children actually comes from when I was a little girl, my parents were pretty nice to me, but they were not that nice to my little brother, especially my dad. And if you see me get um, sad talking about children, it's not just because I have a place in my heart for little children because I'm a mother, but it a lot of it comes from, as a child, seeing my dad be so mean to my little brother. I mean, he, he was not like super abusive, but he was mean. And um, that, you know, when you're a little child and you have empathy, you feel things more. Now as an adult, you know, I don't feel things as much. So when I feel things, it comes from that little child place in me. Um, we don't want to see other people be hurt. We want to see other people be treated well. So what that's what this video is about. I really do not see how we as Germans or as Americans and any nationality really uh, can go along with um, just killing all these children. Real men fight other men. Real men 
fight other soldiers. They they um, destroy military installations. They don't starve children. That's for cowards. That's what Hitler did. That's what the Americans did under slavery. There's a lot of history in our world about people behaving in these brutal ways, but we're trying to evolve as a world. We're trying to evolve as a society and we have to learn to coexist. And trying to practicing genocide just makes the resistance stronger. It doesn't eliminate the problem. It's like the guys on the it's like the guys from MGTOW. They think if they just hate women enough, women will just start spreading their legs and wanting to fuck them. No one wants to fuck you if you hate us. And nobody wants to get along with you when you're trying to exterminate us. Exterminate children and babies. It's horrible what they're doing. They're re they're re they're recommitting the Holocaust with the blessing of the initial, the, the original Holocaust causers, the Germans and the Americans with the, with the Holocaust and with the slavery are still doing it. They're still doing it. Excuse me. The Germans are recommitting their atrocities instead of doing it with the Jews uh, and burning them in ovens. They're supporting the Jews burning children. And the Americans, instead of having um, African slaves, they're now turning their ire and their hegemony onto the Palestinians. We're still doing it. We're still doing it. If they had the power, would they do it? Who knows? If, they, if the Palestinians had the power and were colonizers, would they extinguish us? Maybe. You know, maybe that's just part of human nature. That's a part of human nature that we have to overcome because we are the world. We are the children. 